We've heard from the Jacksons. Speak up, spirit, speak up. Except for the one closest to Michael. Tonight, all that changes. My phone's gonna ring. And I'm gonna hear Dunk. It's me. The baby sister he called Dunk breaks her silence about the big brother she called Mike, only to Robin Roberts. Have you ever met Dr. Conrad Murray? The coroner has concluded the autopsy. Do you hold him responsible for Michael's death? How she heard and what she knew about the drugs. Is Michael in denial? Now, how memories and music are healing her. Her own private video <laughs> diary, her struggles with weight. A divorce get real thin. Something within the family get real thin. I'm the opposite. <laughs> Even her love life. What happened? Oh, Robin, you're not gonna ask me that. Janet Jackson losing her brother and finding herself. <laughs> In the Spotlight with Robin Roberts. If Michael Jackson was the undisputed king of pop, then his baby sister Janet is its princess. When I recently sat down with her, barely five months after his death, I couldn't help but see so much of him in her. Shy and soft-spoken offstage, ferocious on stage. I also saw the part so few of us ever get to see, her humor. Even in mourning, she laughed. But most of all, she remembered a life together. She's part of music royalty. The youngest of the nine Jackson children, one of the most famous musical families in the world. But when Michael Jackson is your brother, there's a lot to live up to. Long ago, Janet Jackson staked out her own claim to become a music icon with videos like Love Will Never Do. It's easy to see why Janet Jackson is the princess of pop. But this summer, America saw Janet Jackson as we've never seen her before, as a grieving sister, a bereaved aunt. I just wanted to say, speak up, spirit, speak up. After the memorial, she walled herself in silence. Two months later, at the Video Music Awards, she staged a moving tribute to her brother. There he is, the king of pop, larger than life, and dancing with his sister one last time, together, yet, apart. My brother was thinking about him and just hoping that, uh, that I put a smile on his face. She has fiercely guarded her private thoughts about the death of her beloved brother, but now she takes us behind these closed doors into her sanctuary from prying eyes and probing questions. I think it's important for everyone. Mm -hmm. Your little getaway, your little, your little safe haven, your little hole in the wall to reach out. Everybody needs that. Here in this starkly elegant beach house in Malibu, she spoke to us for the first time about loss, love, and what remains. How's your heart? How are you? I'm well. I'm, I, I am. I'm well. You're in a good place? <laughs> yes, I am. Her home is filled with memories. This photo was taken at a family gathering the last time she saw her brother. It must be very special. Very. To have that photograph. Mm -hmm. Who were you closest to when you were growing up? Mike. Yeah, we were incredibly close. When was the last time you had seen him? Two days before my birthday. Then what was that like? Fun. Fun. We had a, a lot of fun laughing, and he was sitting in front of me and just cracking up, laughing at me. What do you miss most about him? For me, his silliness, his love, how much fun we used to have together. We would pra practically do everything together, and from morning to night, every day. It was a hot summer day in June when Michael was preparing for the most grueling concert tour of his career. On the morning of June 25th, 
Dr. Conrad Murray had just administered a cocktail of sedatives that may have stopped Michael Jackson's heart. Across the country, his sister Janet was beginning a day that at first seemed just like any other. I was at my house in New York. You know, another day, another morning, and I get a call. It was her assistant who told her that Michael had collapsed. And uh, it's not, your brother's been taken to the hospital. It's on CNN right now. Breaking news. Apparently, Michael Jackson suffered cardiac arrest this afternoon. He was I rushed called to UCLA. I spoke, uh, spoke to mother. I spoke to Tito. I spoke to my sister, Latoya. Well, they were headed to the hospital. And you headed to the airport? Not at that very moment. I, I, I didn't know the severity of it. No one knew. The hospital at the UCLA Medical Center was mobbed by reporters. Inside, the Jackson family, with Michael's children, waited for news. I tried calling again, and that's how I found out that he was no longer. Uh, I don't know. I, this is hard. Um, my brother, the legendary king of pop, Michael Jackson, passed away on Thursday, June 25th, 2009, at 2.26 p.m. I, I just, I couldn't believe it. It just didn't ring true to me. It, it felt like a, like a dream or... A, I'm sorry, Robin, it just, I know, because I keep saying the same thing, I couldn't believe, I just, I, it's still to this day, it's still so difficult for me to believe. It's, it's, you know, you have to accept what is, but it's hard, it's... Two weeks later, his gleaming golden casket surrounded by love and grief. What was it for you in that service that helped you perhaps the most in, in dealing with your brother's death? There being some sort of a closure, I suppose, at that time. I've never, I haven't talked about this, Robin, with, with anyone. And you have to forgive me, I tend to, I, I have this thing where I tend to smile. Ooh. But things kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, a little painful. Mm -hmm. I guess that's just my protective shield. At the end of the service, a moment seared in public memory. As Michael's 11-year-old daughter, Harris, stepped forward to give one final tribute. <laughs> and I just want to say I love him. You were trying your best to comfort her. You were Auntie Janet at that moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. When she turned to you, what did, did you just want to scoop her up and just protect her? Mm -hmm. All of them. Not just her. Um, blanket, Prince, my other nieces and nephews. This is tragic. It's hard for everybody. It's been very hard. I think we've been doing very well. I have a very strong family. Next, all the times they tried to intervene, why didn't they work? I wish he could answer this question for you, and not me. When In the Spotlight returns. Five, three, two, one. With 100 million records sold, five Grammys, and legions of fans around the world, it is hard to believe that Janet Jackson has spent a lifetime in search of her true self. She grew up at the height of Jackson mania. For most of her childhood, the Jackson 5 was constantly on tour. Jackson 5! 
But the little girl found a way to keep in touch through an ABC cartoon series, which profiled the lives of her famous brothers. In my pajamas, in mother's room, in front of the TV, I couldn't wait for it to come on. By the time she was seven, Janet was ready to join the family business. She made her television debut on the Jackson Variety Show with this provocative impersonation. Why don't you come up and sing me sometime? That sassy little... Mae West. Mae West? Yes. You were owning it, and you were just <laughs> sashay, sashay. You know who worked with me on all of that? Mike. They love to perform together, here hamming it up on the Dinah Show. What exactly did he do to help you? The sass and the this and the that. Janet, what you want? He was like a director in a sense. Now you gotta give more. We were very close. He, he helped me with all of that. Was there a moment when you said you wanted to do this? No, but I'm sure my father had a lot to do with it. Joe Jackson, the driving force behind his children's success. The man so famously accused by his son as an abusive stage father. Your siblings have talked differently about your father over the years. Mm -hmm. Some have used the word abusive. Others mm -hmm. have said, oh, he was just old school. Which was he to you? I think it's old school. And that may extrapolate into uh, being a little abusive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, your father seems like he always had an opinion. Mm -hmm. that he wasn't Still afraid. <laughs> Still, that's, that's my father. Are there some times when he's doing his own thing that you kind of cringe a little bit? Yes, but he's my father, and he's very strong. He's very stubborn. He has his own way of doing things. That's Joseph. Why do you all call him Joseph? Oh, I can't believe you're asking me this. Because it's bringing back a memory. I remember when I had called him Daddy, and he said, no, you call me Joseph. I'm Joseph to you. Never said it again. You remember how old you were? I was very young. Younger than 10, younger than 9. So I don't know why, and I've never questioned it. It is what it is, and I've just let it go. Joseph. Janet once had dreams of going to college. I wanted to study business law, and I wanted to be an actress. Didn't I tell you to come straight home from school? Yes, Mama. As her manager, Joe got her a role on the hit CBS series, Good Times. You know what happens to children that make their mamas unhappy. She was only 11, her first breakaway from the Jackson family. And her character as the abused daughter, Penny, revealed unexpected emotional death. Oh, no, Mama, please. Please don't do it. You couldn't have come at a better time here. Her acting talent won her other roles on shows like Different Strokes. And the television series, Fame. But then, Joe changed his mind about the direction of his daughter's career. My father said, mm, I think you'll make more money singing than as an actress. And that was it. Some people have taken that a certain way, how he, in some ways, wanted so much for you at a young age, even more so than probably you want it for yourself. Obviously, he saw something, and it's, it's sad that it takes away your childhood. If I had to do it all over again, would I go about it the same way? I can't, I would really have to think about that. I, I, I would want to say no, not knowing what my life, how it would turn out, because I would love to experience what it would be like to celebrate Christmas and birthdays. I had my first birthday party when I was 23 years old. I'd never celebrate my birthday before then. No birthdays and no Christmas holidays because the Jackson family were devout Jehovah's Witnesses. You kind of feel like you missed something. But then again, you have to, to say to yourself, it's like a catch-22. How can you miss what you didn't have? You know? I... I we grew up pretty quickly. Always working. Always being on stage. She released her first album at 16, singing her heart out on American Bandstand. But the teenage girl was about to revolt. At 18, she married singer James DeBarge against her family's wishes. The beat of the rhythm of the 
Like Janet, he was part of a family singing sensation that topped the Billboard charts with their big hit, Rhythm of the Night. Let's talk about your big rebellion. You got married, James DeBarge. You said partly because you wanted out. Out, yes. I wanted to be on my own, get out of the house. There was no other way that you were going to be able to leave the home? No, not at that age. But James DeBarge had a secret. He was battling drug addiction, and the marriage failed in less than three months. He was my first love. And just being so young and not really knowing what life is really all about, just thinking I could change him if I only could do this and that, and not realizing that it was something that he had to do and want for himself. It was the first time Janet would face the denial of addiction, but not the last. In the failure of her first marriage, she would discover a disturbing parallel to her own brother's dependency on drugs. I've seen it a lot, and I've always tried to help. Was there a time as a family that you thought, we need to do something here? Did you do anything? Of course. That's what you do. Those are the things that you do when you love someone. You can't just let them continue on that way. And we did a few times. We weren't very successful. How did he react to the interventions that you all conducted? How do I say this? Um, understood that it was out of love because of caring. But when it's something like that, People can tend to be in denial. Was Michael in denial? I wish he could answer this question for you, and not me. I felt that he was in denial. Mm -hmm. But you also felt you could love somebody, you can bring them right up to that point. You can't make them drink the water. It's something that you can't do for them. It's something they have to do for themselves. Later. What the family really knew about Michael's drug use. But next, Janet's ongoing struggle. My sister said, she said, Jan, <laughs> Jan, Jan, I knew you were going to have weight issues. You want to know why? <laughs> Latoya's going to kill me for this. When we come back. So much of Janet Jackson's life has played out in the public eye. Yet through the years, she's taken some extreme measures to keep her private life hidden. An elopement with her first husband, James DeBarge. A secret marriage with the second, Rene Elizondo. Rene, we grew up together. He was her partner, collaborator, and secretly her husband for eight years. You have to respect the girl's ability to keep a secret. That's the thing that kills me. It's not like we've been secretly married for eight months. We've been secretly married for like a decade. It's like, come on. But her marriage with Elizondo ended badly. He reportedly threatened to write a tell-all book about her private life. It makes you wonder, uh, was the love truly there? I, I don't like to think about that, because it hurts. The latest man in her life, Jermaine Dupree, a music producer and an executive at a record company. He produced two albums with her, and a single on the latest, Discipline, hit the top 20 last year. We caught tantalizing glimpses of Janet's behind-the-scenes life from his camera's point of view. Jermaine Dupree. Yes. What about Jermaine? They dated for seven years, then she finally announced it was over. But this summer, the tabloids were splashed with speculation when they were spotted together again. You know, uh, they're together, they're not together, they're married. You're not married, are you? No. Well, you know, you've been married in secret before, so I, I thought, know. I just thought I'd I ask. Know. I know. Just checking, I, just checking. I know, people thought we were. I know, mm -hmm. but you were not. Mm -mm. Are you still together? Mm -mm. This is like the rap, oh, you're not. No. I know, once again, the news. Yeah, the news had you about down the aisle. That, you know, I just heard that today. Someone mm -hmm. said that you're engaged and... I said, who am I engaged to? And they said, to Jermaine. I said, oh, I am? <laughs> what happened? Oh, Robin, you're not going to ask me that. Well, no, I don't, mean, I, don't mean like, I don't mean like, ooh, what happened? I mean, because you seem very happy. I adore him. Yeah. Absolutely adore Jermaine. Yeah. Love him to death. And uh, we're still very good friends to this day. Very good friends. But 
That's all I'll say. Um, so are you just chilling for a while, or has anybody caught your eye, or you just want to... Am I single? Is that what you yeah, okay. thought you said? That's that's what, that was a southern way of asking <laughs> if you're single. Are you, are you just... Yeah. yeah, I am single. I've just been into my work. And not just her work in the studio. Now she's writing a book titled True You, a personal story about her lifelong struggle to control her weight. You've talked about the self-esteem issues, you know, the struggles. My sister said, she said to me, she said, Jan, <laughs> Jan, Jan, I knew you were going to have weight issues. You want to know why? <laughs> Latoya's going to kill me for this. Because I, I, I was, there were times when I was teased when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And it affected me a great deal. And I think it affects you when you're told you're not supposed to look like that. You're supposed to look like this. Every child's different. Some it might roll right off their back. But others really take it to heart. As a child, Janet had a nickname. Janet got the nickname Dunk from Michael. Um, I don't know why exactly. I think it had something to do with donkey or... or her butt or something like that. But you know what, brothers can do that, that's okay. You know, it was certainly from a loving place. Within her family, there was always an awareness of her problems with weight. But you really have fought this with the weight issues, mm -hmm. the self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people that, regardless of what it is, if it's something that's stressful, whatever it may be, they don't eat. They lose a lot of weight. A divorce, get real thin. Personal life, get real thin. Something within the family, get really thin. I'm the opposite. <laughs> For years, it's been a frustrating struggle as she yo-yoed from being the superstar with the abs of steel to this, 60 pounds over her normal weight. And though she's famous for her discipline to shed the weight for concert tours and record releases, amazingly, when she looks in the mirror, she says she often doesn't like what she sees. How can you not see yourself as, you know, <laughs> sensual? Easily. <laughs> mm. I, I don't, I, this is, um, see, now you're making me embarrassed. So what made you come out of your shell? I had to. I had to do it for me. I guess it's like facing a fear. And what were you afraid of? Just picking yourself apart all the time because you're so used to being kind of picked apart. Oh, your butt's too big. Got too much meat here. Got too much this there. I know you've often referred about your butt. Uh, in... My booty? Yeah. What's wrong with it? Well, now I know there's nothing wrong with it. Thank you to Jermaine Dupree. And so how do you thank Jermaine Dupree for knowing that? Just loving me the way that he does, you know, and, it, and when we were together, making me feel very comfortable with me, with myself, allowing me that, allowing for me to see that within myself and that I'm fine the way that I am. There's nothing wrong with me. So what's your favorite body part? The sway of my back. The small of my back, I should say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I've just, I've not that long ago started to like my smile. I didn't like my smile before. I always thought I looked like the Joker because it was so big. Because of the cheeks and that? The cheeks and then it's so broad, but I like my smile. <laughs> Next, running away to find herself. What were you going through? But there's trouble alongside the fame of being a one-woman rhythm nation. When we come back. The bumpy road to fame for Janet Jackson. And the road to drugs for Michael. Were you aware of the propofol? 
that he was using that to help him sleep. That's serious. That's heavy. That's heavy. When In the Spotlight with Robin Roberts returns after this from our ABC stations. How do you find yourself in the shadow of a superstar brother? For Janet Jackson, it would come at a price. Could she lose a family name and not lose herself? Fans, cameras, and her own name and lights are just part of the landscape for Janet Jackson. With more than 41 chart-busting singles, it's hard to imagine how someone so famous could say this. I get embarrassed when people stare at me. Very embarrassed. I'm in the wrong business, right? Not that long ago. <laughs> it's the crew guys are standing around. And it was just me on the stage by myself. And I couldn't really perform. I said, like, can you please ask them to leave? Because I just get, I get so embarrassed with people staring at me. Crazy, right? The shy girl from the famous family would have to work hard to become a superstar in her own right. Determined to chart her own course without the help of her family, she fired her father as her manager. At 18, she left her sheltered world behind and headed for Minneapolis to work with producer-songwriters Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I always call them my two dads. <laughs> Loving, caring, always been there for me. I think Janet was going through a lot of personal turmoil. You ease my mind. I do? You truly do. <laughs> Janet, the television star, All right, girlfriend. All right. was serious about becoming Janet, the vocalist. Not because, you know, her dad was telling her to or any outside influence was telling her this is what she needed to do, but because it was something she was interested in doing. What? They brought choreographer Paula Abdul on board. What you want to do, though, is pull it over so you're leaning over. <laughs> You can see her in this rehearsal footage from MTV, instructing yeah. Janet. Circle head roll. Good. That's nice. The reinvention of Janet Jackson was underway. Her surrogate dads exposed her to life without bodyguards and limousines, while they morphed her family stories into lyrics. I did what my father said, she would sing, and I let my mother mold me. There was a lot that I had bottled up inside of me. And being so young, that was really my way of, of getting it out. Control is quietly one of the most significant albums of the last 25 years. It's set in stone that she was her own person. If Control was Janet's defining song, Rhythm Nation would become her anthem. The socially conscious album would incredibly land more top five singles on the pop charts than Thriller did seven years earlier. When I first started working with Michael, he gave me a CD to listen to of music that inspired him. And the first song on that CD was Rhythm Nation. For nearly two decades, her fame skyrocketed, a bankable brand who sold out arenas with multi-platinum chart-topping hits. And there were movie roles, too. You watch it now. You reach over here again, you're gonna pull back enough. <laughs> Ooh, please, she's fiery. I like that. Gone were the days of the innocent girl who sang about abstinence in Let's Wait a While. Let's wait a while. In its place... A bold new sexuality with love will never do. Despite her phenomenal success, there were dark days as well. I come from a place that hurt, and God knows how I pray. Times when it was hard just to get out of bed. What were you going through? I had some depression in me going on, jumping off their pretty pretty seriously. Just things that I suppressed. And suddenly, they weren't going away when I would push them away like they did in the past. 
She had everything. Success, financial wealth, and hit records. But, you know, it was that thought that what if you have everything and basically f